A? Anyone takes B or C? Anyone takes B or C? Okay, has everyone settled on A? Not yet? Okay. You guys think it's A, B, or C? All three are not the same. Which one will I take? Okay, so let's draw the patch because uh, you guys are probably getting confused. I'm going to talk about how light uses the path of least action. So, the path of least action is basically the path that takes the least time and has the least distance. So, if we have two points, let's say these two points are 10 units away from each other, let's say 10 meters, to make it a little more familiar. And let's say it's three meters to the ground. Well, actually, no. Uh, let's say it's 20 meters between the two of them, and it's, I don't know, uh, what unit should I use? I don't know, six meters. And this is also going to be six meters. So I'm going to draw three paths and let's see which one light will actually take. So this path first, it might take this path second. Oh, let's do that again. Oh, let's do that again. There we go. And then this path third. Okay, so I'm going to label, I don't know, how am I gonna label this when all the colors are black? I'm gonna say this one is a, this one is B, this one is C. All right, so uh, I know this definitely looks confusing, so just take a minute to process this image. But which one uh, is like going to take? B, A, or C? A? Anyone thinks B or C? B or C? Okay, has everyone settled on A? Not yet? Okay. You guys think it's A, B, or C? All three are not the same. Which one will I take? Okay, so let's draw the patch because uh, you guys are probably getting confused. So A is gonna be this one, B is gonna be this one, and C is gonna be this one. Which one do you think light is gonna take? A, B, or C? What have we learned about stuff, guys? A? Have you all set them on A? Yep. Okay, I heard you up. So the answer is indeed A, which should be pretty obvious because just from eyeballing it, you can see theta I is equal to theta R, while here theta I is clearly way less than theta R. Here theta I is way more than theta R. Doesn't line up. So. That's A, B, and C. Now, which are, so which one has the least distance? Which one takes the least distance? Shout out your answers. It's just a single letter. I know you guys can do it. B? Okay. Well, the answer is it's neither B nor C. Uh, 
It's also A. A is the shortest distance. You want me to prove that? So be it. So let's draw the thing again. We have uh, six, 20 meters apart. Huh? Yeah, you can, can I, can I, can I yes, you can race them. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So let's draw this a little bigger for those guys in the back who can't see. So we have 20 meters apart, <coughs> six meters tall. So for our first path, A, well, we know this one is much smaller than this one, right? This length is much smaller than this length, correct? Okay, so let's say this is, I don't know, uh, eight, and this is 12. So now, uh, we have two triangles, one with our uh, legs six and eight, and another with legs six and 12. So, now, does anyone think they can find the hypotenuses of these triangles? So, okay, if you sum the hypotenuses of these triangles, you will get the total, uh, the total distance of the path light takes. So, here, uh, does anyone think they can instantly get the hypotenuse of this one? Okay, good guys. You've already memorized your Pythagorean triples and I can see that. All right. And what about the six by 12? Just tell me the square root. 13? Tell me the square root. Six root five. Okay, well let's see if that's correct. Six root five is gonna be root one no, yeah, root 180, and we have six by 12, it's gonna be root 36 plus 144, yeah, root 180 should be correct. So, uh, six root five, or root 180, well that's somewhere between 13 and 14, so I'm just gonna say 13.6, yeah, okay. So that means it sums up to a total of 23.6 meters. Okay, so now what about our other path? So the path that we said would look like, oh, well, let's draw that over here. So we have the 20 meters, we have the six meters. Yes, I know that wasn't a straight line. Uh, okay. Now, this one was straight down the middle. So we have it over here, and it bounced back over there. Okay, so that means this is gonna be six meters, this is gonna be 10, this is gonna be 10, because they're obviously equal. So now we have two triangles, both legs six, 10. Anyone give me the answer on uh, just in a square root? Huh? Louder. Root 136. All right. I believe this is what you said. Oh, yep, yeah, that's correct. Okay, so root 136 for both of them. That is, well, that's almost 12, so, uh, hmm? Oh, 11.6, thank you. So 11.6, 11.6, Oh yeah, anyone can calculate root 180 for me? Thirteen point four. okay. Hmm. Okay, so that leaves us with 23.4 for this one and 23.2 for this one. All right. And then the final one, C, look a little bit like this. Yeah, C is just a B mirror. Huh? No, no, it's fine. C, uh, these 
two are just mirrors of each other. So, of course, they're going to have the same length. So, C is going to have a length of 23.4, B a length of 23.4, A a length of 23.2. So, we know it's the shortest. All right. So, we've discovered that light takes the shortest path. When it bends, it follows the equation data r is inverse sine of n one over n two over n one data i. Oh yeah, and I just realized this kind of makes for a really cool uh, the derivation sort of of the critical angle. Okay, so uh, we take data i. Okay, so we take n one sine data i equals n2 sine theta r. Then solving for theta i, we get theta i is equal to n or sine minus 1 of n2 over n1 uh, theta r. Okay, and so now what we're going to do with that is, uh, does anyone know what happens if, okay, uh, let's see. So does anyone know what happens when, hey, how's this gonna? Oh, yes, sorry. I forgot, this is gonna be sine theta r. Something wasn't working there. So, does anyone know what happens when you plug in a degree of 90 into sine? Okay, it gives you one. So, if theta r is 90, theta i is gonna be sine minus one of n2 over n1 which looks similar, or it's the exact same thing as the critical angle formula that we saw earlier. So, the critical angle is basically what happens when, if you go just below the critical angle for your angle of incidence, it's gonna look like this. So, if you go above the critical angle, it's gonna look like this. Okay, so now we learned about the critical angle, which is basically the largest an uh, angle of incidence you can have when going from a medium with a higher uh, index of refraction to a medium with a lower index of refraction. So that's the maximum uh, <coughs> angle of incidence you can have. We also learned that light takes the shortest path or the path of least action, and that light can do two types of things reflect where its angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection and refract where its angle of, of reflection is going to be dictated by this equation. All right, well, that's all that we've learned today about light.